Good morning. It is always nice to greet you each Sunday morning and welcome you to the house of the Lord. We also are always thankful that we can have the uh, online service and we welcome those who are sharing with us today. I was thinking about how we used to do uh, the greeting and because of COVID, uh, we can't do that. But I was trying to come up with something that was kind of, well, familiar. So if you would bear with me, and if you would stand, I appreciate your willingness. I know that because we are six feet apart, and we can't have the opportunity to do what we used to do, I would like for you to wrap your arms to each other. This is the hug that you are sending to those behind you. You've hugged your family, I'm sure, this morning. So I want you to hug yourself, turn to someone, or stand at least six feet apart from them, and tell them how glad you are that they're here, and this is their hug for the day. Okay, I appreciate your kindness to go along with me today, but that's something I don't know about you, but I've been missing. And uh, the fact that we can't do that and tell people how happy we are to see them and how truly glad that they are here. And we do miss each and every one that isn't able to share with us. I would encourage you to get out your bits and pieces now and go to the back and look at those that are on our list. <clears throat> we have those that have lost a loved one. We have those that are uh, experiencing any kind of, any numerous different things in their lives and those that um, are, need the healing touch of our Heavenly Father. And there are quite a few things that have happened in this last week or before that those are not on our list. But I would like for you to take a moment in this time that we have to remember those servicemen and women and the Afghans that lost their life. Just trying to provide freedom. Also, so many have lost their life and left their loved ones and friends because of COVID. And now people are faced with a massive hurricane. And that would be scary for me. And we also want to lift up all our teachers and students that they might have a successful year and be able to have school. There are people that are so afraid right now because they might lose the place they have that they call home. And there's just a lot of need a lot of people hurting. And so we want to be sure and lift those up each and every day. And that they might feel God's love and caring and know who to turn to 
for that particular need that they have. And we also recognize that there are those that are not on our list, but they really are in need of our prayers and our concern. So as you take this list and you think of those that you might know that are not on the list or those that maybe we don't know, but we know that there's a lot of struggle right now, join Dave as he has the healing prayer. As Kathleen has said, I would ask you to place on your heart a situation or a name of someone that you know that needs God's intervention at this time as I make this prayer. Awesome and powerful God, in the name of your son, we gather here and ask that you would See those that we are lifting up to you. That as we do this, I would ask that your spirit would become alive within each of them. That they might truly receive that which they need to receive. Whether it be peace from grief, whether it be assurances of new things happening in their lives or give them healing where they would need it. We know that it is possible with you, dear God, that everything can be taken care of. But we also know it is your will that we must follow. But gracious God, our hearts lift these people up to you because they matter to us. And we ask that your spirit would come alive, give them what they need, and ask that, that that life force continues within them as they move forward through this week and through their lives. Gracious God, we lift them to you. And we place them in your gentle care, knowing that that is the best possible place that they could ever be. This again we offer in the name of your son, Jesus. Good morning. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good morning. I am so glad to be here today. Um, as I came in, I saw these beautiful rays of sun, and I realized God put those there for us. You know, um, it's just a beautiful day out there. So I want to welcome everyone here today who's online, virtually seeing us. Um, it's a real blessing to be able to do this, so that people who can't make it in. Or for that matter, I've heard of people throughout the United States that are getting into seeing our service every Sunday. So I, it's a great ministry that we get to do here. It's a blessing. Um, and I want to thank you guys for all coming out here this morning and being here. So I'm looking at people, and, you know, um, I miss our smiles, but we will get back there if we just keep trudging away at this. So I'd like to thank everyone that has agreed to come here and share in my service and put up with my um, nervousness and everything. Um, unfortunately, Julie was not able to be here to play the piano. As you know, she's on our prayer list, so we'll keep her in our prayers. But um, I didn't have to find a replacement. Phyllis said, oh, I'm doing it. And I'm like, oh, good, she knows what she's doing, you know, because I feel like I don't. <laughs> but anyway, um, we have also have a little change in Ministry of Music. It will just be Kelly and Isaac today. So. I want to thank the deacons, Doug and Nate, and for all their hard work and getting slides and everything going for us. And then all those that are blessing us with their prayers and their words and their, and their ministry. Um, Dave, David, Kaylee, Randy, Amanda, Isaac, Kelly, Paul, just thank you all for being here. Um, uh, Kathleen gets up here every Sunday, and I don't know that we've ever thanked her, but I really appreciate that she gets up here and gets to open us up and, and bring us into knowing what's going on and telling us about the news and what announcements we have coming up. So 
it's a blessing to have her here. <clears throat> um, when Phyllis asked me to do this, I felt so blessed and so honored that, that I would get to preside. Um, and I, I don't have the words to even explain how that felt for me. So I really appreciate her confidence. Um, Sue Brown, who's not here, because she's somewhere else singing, uh, was kind enough <laughs> to help me. She sat down and we, we went over what we were doing, you know, and she just really helped me line this out. So I want to make sure that I thanked her today. So um, she said she'd watch sometime, but, I, you know. And I want to thank Jerry. Jerry Norman is here. She's going to be our speaker. Um, me and Jerry have been on a little journey. We're going through seminary classes together, and um, we've experienced some aha moments. We've shared with each other in class. We've pumped each other up. Um, we've discussed what we do in our ministry, and I've just wanted to know more about what Jerry does in hers, and I wanted to hear her message. And so that's why it was really important to me to uh, see if I couldn't have her here today. So I'm happy that she's going to share with us. Um, and I'm just, I just feel really blessed today to be here in person, to have the people that are here, and to have the people that are virtual. So welcome to all. Um, in your bulletins, we've put a responsive reading, and it is in there twice. I thought we would start with the first time and take kind of note where you are on that. And then at the end, after we've had all this, take a look at what maybe you see a little different. Um, so if you will join me. Understand the road to transformation travels both inward and outward. We will join this journey to new life. The road to transformation is the path of the disciple. We will seek the way that God would lead us. We are called to make the journey. We will take the path of the disciple. Will you pray with me? God, please help everyone to have peace, both in their mind and their life. Bring peace to those seeking refuge, those seeking equality, those in need of food and water, those who are sick, and so many more. And help all of us to take it upon ourselves to be bringers of your peace. When we don't have hope for peace, help us see the miracles all around us. Let our journey spread peace. Amen.
Lord, we come to get today thankful for our lives and the lives of those around us. We are here today expectant of receiving the blessings of your word and to focus on bettering our experiences together here on earth. We open ourselves to your spirit as we come together in community. Please be with all the participants. Strengthen their talents so we may all be blessed by their offerings. We invite you, Lord, into our hearts and homes. In your name we pray. Amen. The last time that Sam came forward, his dad helped him, so he said he would be my support today. We are blessed. I personally am so blessed. Early in the morning on August 13th, Wally and I received a phone call from our eldest son, Connor. He started by saying, I've been in a collision, but I'm okay. You see, he was traveling home from Independence on I-70, and it was just after midnight. He was almost home. Connor saw the car gaining on him behind him quickly, and he thought that the driver was just in a hurry and would quickly swerve around him at the last second. He even remarked, I was in the slow lane. I was fine. But little did he know, the driver behind him had fallen asleep with his foot on the accelerator. Connor was forcibly hit from behind, and his car was sent into a life-saving guardrail. Both vehicles involved in the accident were deemed a total loss, but both drivers left the scene with only scratches and a few bruises. We are blessed. The entire incident could have been very different and ended very differently. When we recognize the blessings that have been bestowed upon us, we have the opportunity to respond in gratitude. The outward journey is about stepping into the call of God's kingdom. It is about moving from me to others and God. We pursue the outward journey through discernment, serving, and through the sharing of God's love and blessings. And from Sharing in Community of Christ, page 73. Yes, we are bold in our giving. We are one in generosity. We have many ways of giving. We dance our giving. We sit quietly while the plate is passed. We give tithes as the spirit moves and by monthly automatic bank transfer. We give our first fruits and we give our leftovers. We give black pearls and we give live poultry. During the disciples' generous response, we focus on aligning our heart with God's heart. Our offerings are more than meeting budgets or funding mission. Through our offerings, we are able to tangibly express our gratitude to God, who is the giver of all. As we share our mission tithes by either placing the money in the plate at the back of the sanctuary or through e-tithing, use this time to thank God for the many things and gifts that have been received in our lives. And please, let's also not forget about the needs of others in our community. I welcome us all, children and those young at heart as well, to come forward while a little piece is played after my prayer and place your loose change and bills in the tubes for the necessities pantry. 
Our hearts grow aligned with God's when we gracefully receive and faithfully respond by living Christ's mission. Will you pray with me? Our God, we thank you. We thank you for those who not only give, but live as generous disciples. These people share what they need so that others will not go without. Thank you because we can see your kingdom through others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you for the ministry of those that have been up here so far this morning. And thank you for your warm welcome. This is the first time my family and I have attended a service with you on Sunday morning. And so it's a pleasure to be here. When Lisa contacted me about speaking this morning, at first I was nervous, but I was also excited because I was finally going to meet Lisa in person. <laughs> As Lisa mentioned, we are in the same seminary cohort, and we have spent many Zoom sessions together over the last year. I have appreciated hearing her story and her perspective as we have journeyed together in seminary. I was also when I found excited when I found out that Amanda Laws was participating in the service. I have taught for many years with Amanda at Blue Springs South High School. 
And I have a deep respect for her as a person and as an educator, both as a colleague, but also as a parent of one of her former students and now a current student. Sharing in ministry with these two friends and all of you here this morning is a true honor. I am a teacher, and we just completed the first week of school. The first day of school, I always tell a little bit about myself so that my students know who this person is standing in front of them. I won't give you the full lecture that I give them, but the short version starts with my family. My husband, Kevin, and I have three kids. Riley is a senior elementary education major at Northwest Missouri State University, and she began her student teaching journey last week. Our daughter, Shelby, is back on campus, and she is a sophomore biology major, Spanish minor, at Northwest Missouri State University, and Trevor is a sophomore at Blue Springs South High School. Kevin and I have had many adventures as we have followed them through their activities through the years. As I said earlier, I am a teacher, and I teach anatomy and physiology and dual credit biology at Blue Springs South High School. We attend the Woods Chapel congregation where I'm a member of the pastor team, and I also serve on the Justice and Peace Action Team of Greater Kansas City, which is a ministry of the Central USA and Midlands USA Mission Centers. Along with Lisa, I'm currently working on a Master of Arts in Religion and Peace and Justice through the Community of Christ Seminary. It has been an exhilarating, terrifying, demanding, fascinating, and eye-opening experience that I'm truly grateful for. Our scripture text this morning comes from Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 8, 14 through 15, and 21 through 23. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders, and they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesies rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, the people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, adverse, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these things come from within, and they defile a person. <clears throat> Jesus was not afraid to challenge the religious leaders. 
At the time of Jesus, there were two Torahs. One was the written Torah, the five books of Moses, and the second was the oral Torah, a commentary explaining the written Torah. The Pharisees applied oral Torah to everyday life, whereas the Sadducees only affirmed the authority of the written Torah and did not apply scripture issues to the day. This allowed the Sadducees to accept the Roman presence and the influence of other cultures. The Pharisees held to a vision of a holy priestly nation. Jesus endorsed the written Torah, but challenged parts of the oral Torah. He felt the orator, oral Torah had less authority than the written scriptures. The oral Torah was where the rules came from, and there were a lot of them. Over, when they were finally written down, over 700 pages. The intent was good. It applied the Torah to everyday life. But, it did not, but if you did not follow all of the rules, you were not in good standing. And it was hard to remember all of the rules. Some of the disciples, and probably Jesus as well, disregarded the ritual cleaning. By skipping ceremonial washing, Jesus pointed out that the oral tradition of the Pharisees had been elevated to divine status and that religion had become idolatrous and exclusive. Their intent was good, but the focus was in the wrong place. Jesus took issue with the practices and had turned religions that had turned religions into customs that excluded people and led to injustice. The purity regulations that were in question were a way of preserving religious and ethnic identity. If you did not know and follow the rules, you were not a good Jew. By challenging the Pharisees, the story also represents the conflict between Jewish and Gentile Christians. Should the Christian community be exclusive or open to unclean elements, such as the Gentiles? This scripture should make us stop and think about our own religious rituals and traditions. Jesus did not criticize the actual ritual of washing. He criticized the intent of the ritual or the, or the follow through of the ritual. Laws and rituals tend to make life easier. You have a defined, clear list of what to do. Follow the list and you are a good person. Break the rules on the list and you are a bad person. When we get so focused on the criteria that put us in the righteous category, we develop an internal focus. It becomes about us or all about me. The rules also become a way of judging others. If they are not following the rules, they are a bad person and they are not worthy. What are our religious rituals today? We go to church on Sunday, and we have a very familiar pattern to our service. Why do we come here on Sunday? Does the comfort of the routine make us feel good? We check a box on the checklist of doing the right thing, and then we go about our week? There is comfort in the routine, and that is okay. Life is unpredictable. And sometimes the only known factor is the Sunday routine, and that is important. But when we are here, are we really paying attention? Are we listening to what is being said? Are we internalizing the words of the hymns that are being sung? Are we understanding the message of Jesus? Or are we more concerned with the routine? A while back at the Woods Chapel congregation, the chairs were put in a new arrangement. 
Typically, the chairs are in rows that face the front of the sanctuary, but for one particular service, the chairs were re rearranged into more of a circular pattern that uh, focused on the center of the room. Some of the members of the congregation loved the new arrangements, so the presiders over the next couple of Sundays kept the new chair arrangement. As you may expect, some did not like the new arrangement of chairs. The ritual of where to sit had been disrupted. Jesus called out the Pharisees and called them hypocrites. Hypocrisy refers to the disconnect between the values we profess and the practice of our behavior. The Pharisees were practitioners of the law. They were so caught up in the routine that they lost sight of the connection to God. Several years ago, I was asked to be a sponsor of a club at school. I can't re remember the name of the club, but the conversations of those kids made an impact on me. Due to the nature of the conversation, I didn't, I didn't join in with the conversations because they all often turned to religion. I wasn't participating in the discussion but I was listening. The kids were frustrated with formal religion. What they saw was that church was only about what was happening in the building. They did not see a connection between what was taught in church and how people lived their lives. They saw, who people, they saw people who went to church doing the same bad things as those who did not go to church. They did not see the relevance of religion in their, to their lives. They saw hypocrisy. What is the relevance of religion or church in our lives? As members of Community of Christ, we are called to continue the mission of Jesus today. Through the mission initiatives, invite people to Christ, abolish poverty in suffering, pursue peace on earth, develop disciples to serve, and experience congregations in mission. Christ's mission becomes our mission. The life, ministry, and teaching of Jesus cast a new vision for the kingdom of God. The Jewish people expected a political kingdom that would protect and preserve the Jewish faith. What Jesus taught was a new way of life that challenged the prevailing social order. Jesus presented what the kingdom would look like if God were its direct ruler. A transfiguration that brought about the end of evil, injustice, and violence. In the kingdom of God, shalom is realized as well as all creatures live in community and have equal value and worth. The kingdom of God is God's love in action. So what does that look like for us today? The world is in crisis as there is economic injustice, racial injustice, health care injustice, gender injustice, LGBTQ plus injustice, political injustice, and injustice toward the earth. The list of challenges can seem endless and we can feel powerless in our desire to work for change. The life, teaching, and ministry of Jesus inspires us to do something about it. Jesus was God incarnate. Through the life and ministry of Jesus, we begin to understand God more deeply. The social hierarchy was disrupted as the marginalized were publicly accepted into community and the injustice of society was exposed. The life, ministry, 
and teaching of Jesus presented a new view of peace. God's vision of love expressed as shalom can only be obtained through living in loving community with others and with creation. It involves the realization that we are all one and that we must address the deep divisions of society. The message of Jesus is a message of hope. The ministry of Jesus challenges us to analyze conflicts that lead to divisions in our society and to work to understand the underlying issues that cause the divisions. Only then can effective strategies be developed to manage and change the systems that lead to oppression and injustice. The work for peace begins with awareness. We must open our eyes to the needs of those around us. Society cannot flourish when there is suffering. Those that have the resources have a responsibility to hear the cries of those around them and to do something to change the systems that lead to injustice. I believe this is what that group of students was looking for. They heard the message of Jesus when they were at church, but they did not see the message turned into action in their communities. Church for them had become only about the rituals. Don't get me wrong. I do believe the routine and the rituals of the church are good and necessary. They bring us into community where we experience love and support. We develop our moral compass and we learn how to be in relationship with God. We cannot stop at the rituals. It is about more than our individual experience. It is about the transformation that happens in us. Jesus taught a new vision of the kingdom of God, a new set of values, a new way to understand God. The church should be a community whose culture and structures are based on kingdom values that meet the needs of the members of the community and the community at large. The love of God must be expressed through us as we work for just communities. In our scripture today, Jesus is criticized for not washing his hands before eating. His response, that is, it's not what goes in that defiles, but what comes out. What they were eating and how they were eating was not as important as what was reflected from their heart. In biblical times, it was thought that thoughts came from the heart. So in this case, heart and mind are interchangeable. What is coming from our heart? What do our actions say about us? There's a Casting Crown song that has been running through my head all summer. As you listen to these words from the song, start right here, ask yourself, is it about ritual or is it about the message of Jesus and the transforming love of God. From start right here. We want our coffee in the lobby. We want our worship on a screen. We got a rock star preacher, not talking about myself here, this is the lyrics of the song. We got a rock star preacher who won't wake us from our dreams. We want our blessings in our pocket. We keep our missions overseas. But for the hurting in our cities, would we even cross the street? The song goes on and it also asks the question, what if the church on Sunday was also or was still the church on Monday too? Is it about the ritual 
Or is it about the message of Jesus and the transforming love of God? Are we ready to put our words into action? Am I ready to put my words into action? Has church become a place of comfort or a call to action? Are we caught in the illusion that attending church is enough? Church often becomes an extension of ourselves as we are surrounded by those who are like us. We keep ourselves separated from the marginalized and we do not hear their cries for help. Do we need to revision what we do? The church should be made up of people who embody Christ as they live out the mission of Jesus. Through this, the kingdom of God is no longer a far distant place that we go after we die. The kingdom of God is present in the here and now. The mission of Jesus calls us to challenge cultural and political norms and to see God in all people and in creation. If we truly embody this, a transformation will happen within us as we expand our community to include those who are marginalized and as we work for just communities of joy, hope, love, and peace. Shalom calls us into community with others and with creation. Jesus showed us God's vision of the kingdom, a vision of peace on earth. God, embodied with Jesus, in Jesus, is still present with us today through the Holy Spirit. The message of Jesus and his vision for the kingdom of God continues to inspire us as we, week, as we work for peace and we confront injustice in our society.
joining me in the responsive reading. Understand that the road to transformation travels both inward and outward. We will find this journey to the road to transformation is a path of the disciple. We will see the ways of God and the We are called to make this journey. We will take the path of the disciple. Would you bow with me? Gracious God, we humbly come before you recognizing, recognizing that there is a tremendous need out there. There are so many people hurting, so many people disenfranchised, so many people needing that love that you show and that you share with us each day. Please open our hearts and our minds and help us to see your children in need. Help us to break forth from our fears, from those things that would keep us from sharing and loving as you called us to do, and help us to break forth with compassion and caring for your people. We go from this place not the same as when we walked in, because we have been called we have been called to reach out beyond these walls and to truly make a difference by loving, by showing compassion, by showing understanding. Help us to do so. Too many times we walk by someone and we don't see what you see. So help us open our eyes Help us to see the need and help us to be your hands and to be a voice of love and caring. We just want to do something for you that brings a little hope, a little love for somebody else out there. We thank you that you gave us the greatest example in your son that you loved us that much. Help us to be and to learn how to love like that. And it's in his name, our Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. to take this moment to thank you all for being um, able to change since we've always done it a different way we've had a little transformation here and so I thank you uh, Lisa has an announcement I need volunteers you knew that was coming right <laughs> fall fun fest is coming up we are gonna have a booth we're gonna do it a little bit different we're going to cut down the number of people in there to help us keep some social distancing. And so we're just going to serve our walking tacos and cold drinks. And then the other booth is going to be set up with a table or two where there'll be chairs. And we will give glasses of cold ice water for those fairgoers who need it. Um, and that's where we're going to share our mission. We're going to invite them to Christ. We're going to invite them to church. We're going to tell them about the necessity pantry. We're going to tell them about anything and everything we can to maybe reach out and do Jesus' mission. So there'll be about four or five of us per time at the booth, and it's on the 17th, 18th, and 19th. And so give me a call, give me an email, anything. Come help join in this, and I hope that this will uh, bring some more people in to see what Community Christ is about. So it continues to be affirmed for me, and I'm sure for all of you too, that uh, Colonial Hills is, is being called. God is calling us, and um, 
we need to take the time to figure out what that call is for. And so for those of you who were at the uh, meeting Wednesday night, thank you for being there. For those who watched it online, we also appreciate that. If you have not um, watched the meeting from last Wednesday night, we made the link private um, just because we didn't feel like having it out there on YouTube uh, made a lot of sense for just the general public. So if you need that link, you can email me or you can email Dale McLaren and we'll send you that link. We are asking that the congregation respond to the two recommendations that the Leadership Exploration Committee brought. The first around um, going through a process of long-term discernment, not necessarily long-term, let me take that back. A, a, a period of discernment where we think about what our mission is as Colonial Hills. And the second recommendation is um, how we deal with some of the short-term essential ministries that we need to continue to um, have during that period of discernment. So if you have not already let Dave Loy know, know, he created a little form for you that you can check off and give back to him. So he and Kathy have those. You can get those from him or you can email him um, your response as well. And just to remind you, the response is, do you feel as though we should go through this process of discernment and do you agree with the areas of short-term ministry that we need to address? The how we do those things will be further conversations through the congregation. So again, please see David or Kathy at the end of the service um, to let them know or to get one of those forms. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, it looks like we are actually going to have an annual crop hunger walk again this year. Uh, last year was virtual. Uh, that is going to be on a Saturday, uh, October 9th in the morning, 10 to 12 apparently. Um, hopefully. Um, and so uh, just to let you know that there'll be further announcements along the way, but uh, that's about six weeks off. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day today. Join me in the mission prayer. Do you guys have it on slide? There we go. God, where will your spirit lead today? Help me be fully awake and ready to respond. Grant me courage to risk something new and become a blessing of your love and peace. Amen. Have a great day, guys.